<laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>now an issue that comes up a lot is when is an employer on notice that an employee might have an FMLA condition well in short an employer is on notice of a serious health condition once an employer is quote quote reasonably aware that there could be some FMLA event you know some condition now I got news for you when you are reasonably aware that somebody has some condition, that is a very pro-employee standard. Now, a few years ago, we got a great case right on point. It's Vargo Adams versus U.S. Postal Service. And basically, here's what's happening in the case. You got an employee working at the Postal Service who suffers from migraines. And since she has migraines, she misses work, right? She was unable to maintain a regular work schedule. So, the Postal Service fired her. Well, the employee is now claiming, hey, this violates the FMLA, I got migraines, you should have granted me intermittent leave. Well, here's what the employer says. It says, well, first of all, we didn't know you had migraines. You never told us that you had migraines. So, how are we supposed to know to grant FMLA leave when we don't even know you're having migraines? And second, you didn't go to the doctor. You didn't go to the doctor. So, you know, you got to go to the doctor a couple of times or at least once and get a regimen of continuing treatment. Well, right there, that should be a hint to all your employers out there. Remember, we went all over those various types of conditions, those various types of situations where somebody could be covered under the FMLA. It's not just you go to the doctor once and get a regimen of continuing treatment, or you go to the doctor twice. Chronic health conditions, there's all these types of things you need to look into. So that's the employer's case. We didn't know you had migraines, and you never went to the doctor. So how are we supposed to talk to you about FMLA? Well, the employee comes back and says, wait a minute. Yeah, I never told you that I had migraines. But I was calling off every single time with headaches. Headaches. I mean, you should have, quote, quote, gotten the hint that I've got a serious health condition when every single time I'm calling off with headaches. And if you'd have fulfilled this duty of inquiry, hint, 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 duty of inquiry should be something that should be stapled on your liver. When are you reasonably aware of a qualifying event? She says, I'm calling off every time with headaches. And if you'd have fulfilled your duty of inquiry, I went to the doctor about six times. See, if you had asked, you would have known. So you see the two different arguments that are at work here. Well, the court looked at this and they said, the employee's right. You are, quote, quote, reasonably aware that there could be something going on here. If an employee is coming up to you and saying, I got headaches. Oh, I got headaches. Oh, I got headaches. Feels like an alien's trying to claw its way out of my eyes. To quote Abdul Jabbar, I got these terrible headaches. You have a duty of inquiry. And if you would have fulfilled this duty of inquiry, you would have found out all about these doctor visits and everything would have been fine. An employer is not allowed to just ignore a situation. You got a quote, quote, pattern of illnesses here. That is what puts you on notice that you should be reasonably aware that there is a problem. Now, employers should pay particular attention to these types of cases. An employee does not have to come up and say, well, I think I have an FMLA condition here. I think I have a chronic serious health condition and I've been to the doctor twice this year and I think I'm covered by the FMLA. It does not work that. The Department of Labor assumes all of your employees are daft. 
it assumes that they don't know anything about the FMLA. Now, that's not really true. Uh, a lot of employees actually know more about the FMLA than you do. Uh, your problem children are going to study this and they probably have a PhD in the FMLA. That doesn't make any difference at all. When are you reasonably aware? Well, if someone's calling off, oh my gosh, I just, I, my, my stomach is so upset. My stomach is so upset. Well, if their stomach is always upset across the span of a month, you have a duty of inquiry. Oh, my, my chest hurts. My chest hurts. My chest hurts. My chest hurts. Well, I got news for you. If somebody starts complaining their chest hurts, you got duty of inquiry like right now. Oh, I got these headaches. 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 And it's the same thing. If there's a pattern going on here, you, my friend, have a duty of inquiry. Now, remember, this is the FMLA. It is one of the most pro-employee laws there is. So you better get ready for it. You better train your managers so that they know of this duty of inquiry. Because if they don't recognize it, the message will never get sent to administration, human resources, the CFO, or whoever to deal with this situation. So, along those same lines, what if you start missing a lot? What if you start missing? Like, I call off from work on Monday. Well, I'm off on Monday. I'm not feeling good. I'm not feeling good. Then I call off on Tuesday. Oh, still not feeling good. I'd have to get better to die. All right, so I'm just um, dying here. Day three. I'm still off sick. Now, think what's happening here. You got somebody that's calling off from work. It's three days. Now, I just want you to think in your own life. When was the last time that you missed three days from work? I mean, if you're going to miss three days from work, something serious is going on, right? Something's happening. Three days to be knocked out, right? To be on your couch or on your bed or something like this can't come into work that's bad you got a duty of inquiry because remember the very first type of condition or the very first category we looked at has the employee missed more than three days well guess where that standard comes from this standard right here comes from has the employee been incapacitated for more than three days. And those are three calendar days. Well, if you got somebody that's been calling off for two or three days, I got news for you. It is absolutely for certain you are on a duty of inquiry. You had better be asking, hey, is everything okay? Is there something serious going on here? You know something we should know about? You better be asking. Hint, hint, hint. Train those supervisors. Train them. Make sure that they know that this could be an issue and call someone in administration, HR, CFO, somebody, the administrator, somebody that's dealing with leaves to guide them through this. One of the biggest problems in dealing with the ADA and FMLA is supervisors roll right over top of it and don't even recognize it. A prolonged absence is going to institute a duty of inquiry. Now, what if you genuinely could not have been on notice? I mean, what if there was no reasonable way that you could have known that this employee had some serious health condition that would qualify them for FMLA coverage? Now, be careful with this because this is a standard that is very pro-employee, I mean, you're talking about one of the most pro-employee employment laws out there. FMLA, ADA, Fair Labor Standards Act. Those are all pro, pro, pro to infinity pro-employee acts. But let's say that you do have a situation in which you really couldn't have been reasonably aware that there was a serious health condition kind of hard to think of an example, but let's say someone's on vacation and they have some condition. Well, they're not going to call off, right? While they're on vacation, you're going to have a notice when they come back. 
But let's say that the employee hides it from you. Well, if that's the case, if they lie to you, you have a duty of inquiry. They have a duty to come back and tell you. So if you honestly could not have been reasonably aware that there was a serious health condition going on, and that is from the perspective of the most pro-employee person on your site, then you're probably okay. But I'll tell you, you got to train your managers in this. Nine times out of ten, you're going to be on notice. So you've done a really good job making sure that all of your supervisors have their antennas up as to when they should be quote, quote, reasonably aware that there's a serious health condition going on out there. Like with Miss Vargo Adams, right? Miss Vargo Adams is calling off with a headache. Oh, I got a headache. Oh, I got a headache. Oh, I got a headache. Well, your supervisors now recognize, well, my gosh, she's called off five or six times with headaches. I got a duty of inquiry here. So they ask, well, is something more serious going on? Is something, you know, what's happening here? And she says, yeah, I got migraines. Okay, stop. You stop. Your supervisor now recognizes, okay, this is definitely, if she's telling the truth, an FMLA claim. And most likely an ADA claim. Now, hint, 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 for those of you that have listened to the ADA course or those of you that are familiar with the ADA, when you get an FMLA claim, your antennas absolutely positively have to go up to the ADA as well. Chances are really good that if you've got an FMLA claim these days, you would very likely also have an ADA claim. So what happens next? Well, that supervisor lets someone in administration know, human resources, the CFO, the administrator, whoever it is that's responsible for this stuff, office manager. So what do you do? We verify it. We verify it. You're not just going to take the employee's word for it that they have migraines. I've had people fake pregnancies. You start thinking, okay, how do you fake a pregnancy? Well, it's really not that tough. I mean, if you get pregnant, I mean, hey, congratulations, you got pregnant. You now qualify automatically for the FMLA. I mean, if you have been with us long enough and we have enough employees, you know, that kind of stuff. But now I can be late. And I'll tell you, a great time to get pregnant is during football season. Because, you know, NFL plays a lot of their games on Sundays. And if you happen to be a Bengals fan like I am, you probably drink a lot. You know, on Sunday nights, you don't feel like getting up on Mondays. Therefore, the Friday, Monday leave act. So what do you do? You send over a medical certification. Well, now you're in limbo. She's told you that she has migraines, but you don't really know. Not until you get the medical certification back. I mean, chances are really good a doctor's going to confirm that, yes, she does have migraines, but maybe not. So, you know, does she have a serious medical condition? Does she not? You don't really know. Right? So this could go on for a week, two weeks, three weeks. So what do you do throughout this one, two, and three week period when you don't really know if she really has migraines or not? You don't really know whether she has a serious health condition or not. What do you do? You treat this employee like as if this condition is covered by the FMLA. Because that is the presumption, right? Miss Vargo Adams has come up to you, told you that she has migraines. So instantly the supervisor lets human resources know. So HR fires up the medical certification form, shoots that over to Miss Vargo Adams, and you wait until you get that form back to see if this is a serious health condition, if she really does have migraines. Okay. So in the meantime, you treat her like as if this is an FMLA event. At that same time, Human Resources, within five business days, is going to send to Ms. Vargo Adams the eligibility notice, which along with that is the rights and responsibilities notice. Now, understand, the eligibility notice is different 
from what you're going to get with the medical certification and other notices. The eligibility notice, which we will talk about in more detail, but as soon as that medical certification goes out, before you even know if this is a serious health condition, this eligibility notice is going to tell Ms. Vargo Adams if she is eligible for FMLA coverage, if she is eligible. Has she worked the requisite number of hours? Has she worked the requisite number of months? Does she work within the proper number of employees? All that type of stuff. So that's going to tell her if she is eligible. So that's got to go out within five business days. So there can't be any waiting around. This used to be a two-day requirement. And the Department of Labor gave you an extra three days. Attached to the eligibility notice is the rights and responsibilities notice. You never send out an eligibility notice without also sending the rights and responsibilities notice. And we'll talk about in more detail what the rights and responsibilities notice does, but this is for your benefit, the employer. You want to make sure that you have that rights and responsibilities notice all fired up and ready to go. So to recap here a little bit, Ms. Vargo Adams comes up to you, tells you she's got migraines. The supervisor lets human resources or the administrator or whoever it is that is administering leave, fires up the medical certification form. And along with that, gets the eligibility notice put together. You look to see if Ms. Vargo Adams is covered by the FMLA. And you fill out the rights and responsibilities notice. Now, both of those should be loaded up in your computer systems ready to go. And we'll talk about those in more detail here in just a little bit.